Hello guys, Dello304 here. I'm actually using my iPhone 6s to record this video because my camera, I actually forgot to bring the SD card for it, so yay me. Anyway, as you can see, I'm at my other house right now. I'm currently over here for the weekend, and I just wanted to make this video because I just spent the last three hours of my life completely redoing this room. So I, just, I moved a lot of stuff around. If you remember, I haven't made too many videos over here, but if you've seen them, you'd remember that I have a, I used to have a bunch of desktop computers, and I had this uh, thing right here. I had this table kind of over here. I had that in this position, and there were just computers over here. So I decided to change all of that up because, I well, one, I was getting kind of bored with the setup, and two, I... It was kind of difficult to get behind all of those computers and change out the um, video ports and the USBs and all that good stuff. So I decided to go ahead and do a complete redesign of my this room. And so I have basically kind of organized it. Besides this, these are computers that are non-functional, so I don't really count them. I have the whole laptop station over here. But besides the Macintosh SE, because I just put it there because I didn't really have anywhere else to put it. This is kind of the laptop station. <laughs> so I have this table. You can put two laptops on here at once. I have power leads. This is my universal laptop charger. That's kind of nice. And then over there I have a power strip with a couple power adapters. And then down here is where I store all the laptops that I'm not currently using. So I have quite a few, as you can see. So that's that this side of the room now. I kind of like the way it turned out. This is a little messy over here. This isn't really finalized. I just wanted to get a little ground for kind of kind of just a, a basic plan before I actually start refining things. This is in the same spot that didn't move. It's got my iMac G4 and the PowerBook G4 on it. There, there is a um, Power Mac G3 that works, and those two are just cases. Well, this one has most of a computer in it, but it's an AMD machine. I don't really want to mess with it. But this, this is what I spent most of my time doing. I made basically a second desk. <laughs> um, I built this desk a while back myself out of spare wood in the house, but we don't really have any of that anymore. So I used my two multicolored, well, organizer things. They're stable enough, so I just took... That is actually a bulletin board that was in my closet, but it's sufficiently thick enough to be, to be used as a desk. And so that's exactly what I did with it. So you kind of, I kind of threw this together here. It's a little, a little interesting. It's kind of, it's got a cloth um, wrap around it. It's basically just a, a piece of wood, but it's got a cloth wrap around it. So it feels kind of nice to put stuff on. And then I actually have this board here with a book that's kind of keeping it from um, warping. So that kind of supports the middle, which is fine. And then I have some computers down here. I got the Power Mac G4 Quicksilver, the Power Mac G4 MDD, Optiplex GX110, Optiplex GX260. There's a Dell Dimension E310, which I will be sticking a hard drive in finally because I found a spare SATA hard drive. So that thing's been missing a hard drive for uh, many, many months now. And there is the old custom built computer from about 1997 or so that I've already done a video on. And then as you can see, this is kind of the command center. I basically took all of my monitors. That 17 inch Dell monitor is actually from my other house. I decided to bring it over here since I have the Asus 20 inch over there anyway, and that wasn't really being used. So now I have kind of a command center and um, well, this monitor is hooked up to this computer, but it's not currently on because again, no hard drive. But anyway, I have the G4 MDD going in the Optiplex GX110. So yeah, kind of neat. I haven't really figured out the whole keyboard and mouse situation. I do not have a KVM switch, so I have to have separate peripherals for everything. So I have, this is for the Optiplex, these are both PS2. I have the Apple keyboard for the MDD, which is USB and a Dell USB mouse. And then I have another Dell USB mouse and a Logitech USB keyboard that are hooked up to that. So I'm gonna just kind of switch out, I'm just gonna push this back and move these peripherals in for when I want to use whatever computer. So I guess that's gonna, it's kind of messy looking, but that's how it's gonna work. Maybe I can find a KVM switch at some point, who knows. So there you go. 
And then if you walk behind here, I, I specifically wanted to make a kind of area where I could crawl back here and kind of switch wires out and such. So if you come back here, you can see that I have a lot of space back here that I can actually get to my stuff. And so, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark, unfortunately, but you can kind of see that all of those computers back there, I can plug in different wires and such with ample room to move around and actually get to that stuff. So, that's pretty neat. So, this is kind of nice. Maybe I can put the phone through here, kind of see what I'm talking about. So, yeah, interesting. There you go. That's kind of the whole setup there. Um... I just wanted to do a little update on that. I will probably keep this video going until I get that computer up and running. And then I actually have, well, maybe a couple more things planned. I'm going to be reinstalling Windows XP on the Dell Inspiron 8500, which is currently running Vista. And I think that's about it. The rest, there's really nothing else I'm going to do currently. But this video will probably be a work in progress for now. All right, so I have the Dell Dimension E310 opened up. This computer was given to me for free after I built a newer computer for a client that I had a while back. That was about a year or two ago now. It's been a long time. Anyway, after I built them a newer computer, the they just gave me this old one without the hard drive in it. This is a, like I said, a Dimension E310. It's got a Pentium 4. I believe it's a 2.8 or something. Or maybe it's got, yeah, it's got a Pentium 4. I'm not sure of the clock speed off the top of my head. I haven't used this computer in a long time. I believe it has... I, I don't even know how much RAM it has anymore. I think it probably has one or two gigs. And like I said, no hard drive. So I have this spare Seagate 60 gig that I'm going to put in there. So it's kind of nice. Uh, this was actually sent in to me by a viewer. So thank you, viewer. Um, yeah, and then I have obviously a SATA cable that I can actually so I can actually put it in properly. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. There is the SATA connector is right up in there. So I'm gonna plug that in. And this computer is not set up for a 2.5 inch drive, but um, I'll probably just set it in there honestly or find a way to mount it somewhat safely. So yeah, we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get the drive in and we'll uh, well, actually, crap, this doesn't have an optical drive. Okay, well, I will probably find one to stick in somewhere. Yeah, there's one in here. I can probably get that out of there somewhat easily, although it is kind of supporting this whole thing, so that might suck. We'll figure that out. I'll find an optical drive to stick in there, but yeah. Okay, well, that was simple. I was able to pull the drive out of that computer and stick it in, so that's good. This is actually a DVD RW drive. Kind of high-end-ish. It's an IDE drive, so, eh. And then I have the hard drive kind of in a crappy um, mounted manner here. Unfortunately, it's a crappy old computer, so it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and turn it on and verify that things are indeed working. So let's press F2 to get into the setup. Remove this keyboard out of the way. Yeah, I can see how this is going to become an issue as time goes on. We'll see how it goes. Let me get this keyboard out of the way, get this mouse, okay. So, it is a Dell Dimension E310, it's got a Pentium 4 2.8, I was right, sweet. It has 1.5 gigs of RAM, and let's see, whoops. Drive zero, set of zero. Turn that on. Drive one, set of two, no. Pad of zero is on. Got mm, okay. So here we are. Let's see what else do we have in here that could be somewhat interesting. Okay. Zip. Save and exit. So you stick a an XP disc in here. Let's go boot menu. And I will stick this Windows 7, no. Do we want to put 7? Let's see. Hmm, I have to make a decision here. Do I want to put Windows 7 or Windows XP on it? It's got 1.5 gigs, a set of hard drive, it's got a Pentium 4. Hmm, let's put 7, because screw it, YOLO. Okay. Let's 
Go like that. Is it going to work? That is the question. That always usually has a different answer. Oh, there we go. All right. Aha! We are in service. We are in business, I mean. So there we are. Kind of neat. I mean, yeah, it is a little messy, as you can see. But it is kind of neat at the same time to have everything in one spot. I like it so far. So yeah, that computer is getting worked on. These two are kind of just sitting here on, because why not? YOLO. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but this is the Power Mac G4. Go ahead and... I'm about this Mac, so it has got dual 1.25 gigahertz PowerPC G4 is two gigs of RAM. It is running 10.4.11, and I have a 10.5 install disk right here, but the uh, optical drive in there is not connected apparently, and I'm really, really don't feel like moving these computers out of the way to connect it, at least not right now. So I will upgrade it to Leopard at some point, and. I also have a spare USB wireless adapter over there, you might be able to see it right there, that I'm going to see if I can get it to work on Macs, on PowerPC Macs, I don't know if it's even going to work. I know it works on this uh, GX260 here, so we'll see. Anyway, then I have the GX110. This computer, in case you don't know, this was one of my very first computers. This was my second computer. It used to be my dad's. I used to remember playing flash games and stuff on this thing back in like 2007 or 2006. So, yeah, this computer is very sentimental to me. So, there you are. It's still running here. Uh, this Windows install is not obviously not original. It's from uh, 2010, I believe, is when I installed it. It's XP Pro Service Pack 1. The weird thing about this computer, I don't know if it's just this computer or whatever, but if you run anything newer than Service Pack 1, Windows XP, it runs like so freaking slow. But service, Windows XP Service Pack 1 w runs really fast on here. As you can see, I added the OEM information a while back. 256 megs of RAM, it's got a 797 megahertz Pentium 3, and a 20 gig hard drive. So, there you are. That is my childhood computer, pretty much. I, yeah, it's a 20 gig. So yeah, I've used this computer, I used this computer so much back in the day. Just to play little games and such. So there you are. Kind of interesting. Oh, okay. So we have Windows 7 up and running here. Well, the setup anyway. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to get going on this. I'm going to get this set up and I'll be back with you at a later date. And I'm also going to make some dinner. So see you guys in the next clip. Also something I forgot to mention, I got this iPhone 5, and if you were following my Facebook page, you would probably know about this already. Yeah, not shameless self-promotion, but yeah, you should really go follow it. Anyway, I got this iPhone 5 from my friend Manly. So this is a 16 gig iPhone 5 unlocked. This is the GSM carrier agnostic version. And this phone was originally, well, my friend Chris's, he bought this new in 2012 sometime and from the Apple store. And then apparently his roommate used it for a while. Manly bought it off his roommate because it needed a phone for a couple of days. And then after that, he sold it to me. So yeah, I only paid a hundred bucks for this thing. And it is fully functional, unlocked iPhone 5. So pretty neat. As some of you may know, I was using an iPhone 4S as my backup phone before. And so the iPhone 5 is literally about twice as good. So I figured, why not? I, so I, I took it. So, yeah. It's in pretty good shape. It's got a couple nicks and scuffs here and there. But it's really nothing too bad. It's got a little dent there. And it's a little roughed up overall. But it's in pretty good shape. And as you can see, it has the infamous OtterBox marks. Because it was kept in an OtterBox case for a lot of its life. So, eh. I don't know. That's kind of disappointing. But whatever. It's a white phone, so it's much harder to tell. So that's nice. So yeah, there's there's that, iPhone 5. Still going over here, installing Windows. It's still going, obviously it's gonna take a while, it's an old computer, so yeah. Old computers, everyone. <laughs> I remember these days.
Okay, we're nearing the end of the installation, so that's cool. I may actually might have a use for this computer, we will see. I wonder if this computer can run this monitor, because if it can, I will probably swap those. And, well, we'll see. I don't know. I want to, well, we'll see. Everything is kind of a work in progress right now. Whatever computer over here I can get internet access working on, that's probably going to be the one that is going to be hooked up to this monitor in the main, the kind of the main peripherals. We'll see how it goes. But, there we are. Almost done here. So I just looked up my little wireless adapter here online, and this this uh, adapter only has Windows drivers, so unfortunately we will not be able to use the Mac. So there will be some setup switcherooing. I'm not exactly sure which is what computer is going where. It's looking like this computer, since it is pretty much the newest out of all the other ones here, is from about 2005 and has SATA, SATA and DDR2 and etc. So that's probably the computer that's going to be hooked up over here the most, or to the main, to the center display at least. So, okay, so I have everything set up the way I want it now. <clears throat> I got these speakers. I also took these from my other house. These are some cyber acoustics, cheap speakers, better than these though. Anyway, I hooked those speakers up to the dimension, so now it sounds decent. And then I hooked up those two slightly crappier speakers to the Optiplex and the Power Mac G4 has a built-in speaker so it doesn't need external speakers. Anyway, as you can see, I got the drivers installed. I got the Wi-Fi working. As you can see, I am now connected and we can now get on El Goog as you can see here. So, we can search for Dell. And eventually it comes right up. So, you know, um, it is a Pentium 4, and as such, it is a pile of shit, but it is decent for web browsing and doing very, very basic tasks, so that's nice. As for this one, you know, obviously, these are the same. So, yeah, now that I've gotten the Dimension E310 all set up and ready to rock and roll, let's get started on the Dell Inspiron 8500. We're going to be reinstalling Windows XP on that machine, and I brought my 16 gig flash drive with all of the drivers that I need and such on it, so yeah, that'll help out. Just where my iPhone's having trouble focusing here. There we go. So, yeah, Cruiser Glad 16 gig. Got all the drivers. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so here we are at the Dell Inspiron 8600. Sorry, I called it an 8500 because I actually do have one down here. It's just in terrible shape. And I used to have one before <clears throat> five years ago. Anyway, here is the Dell Inspiron 8600. It this is currently running Windows Vista 32-bit, but I put Vista on here before I put Vista on this computer, which is the C700. I decided to just put it on here instead, and as such, I do not need two machines running Vista. So we're going to restore it to its former glory and install Windows XP. So, yeah, that's era appropriate, because this is from 2003, so, yep. So we're just installing XP there, and we will finally be done. I'm pretty much done doing what I wanted to do. And just like that, Windows XP has been installed on this computer once again. <clears throat> so that concludes this video. I have accomplished basically everything I wanted to in one day, which was cool. Because I am going to be somewhat busy for the rest of the weekend. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little vlog style video. I don't do many of these, and I'm sorry because I usually don't have much in the in the way of computer related information or updates. I'm more on cell phones, but yeah, I'm trying to do as many computer videos as I can. So there you are. Okay, guys. So it is the next day. It's about 3 p.m. I just want to give you one final little overview of this whole thing because I did make some more changes. I actually hooked up the 90 or the uh, older custom built computer here. I hooked it up to this display. This monitor does have dual input, so this monitor has the Power Mac G4 MDD um, hooked up via DVI, and then this computer is hooked up via VGA to this monitor. This monitor is hooked up via VGA to the Dimension E310, and this monitor is hooked up to the Optiplex. So, I also took the speakers from this setup over here. I took the speakers and I put them here. So now I have three sets of speakers. 
these speakers are hooked up to the E310, these are hooked up to the GX110, and these are hooked up to the older custom built computer. So now I have a lot of different setups, and then the MDD does not require speakers because it has one right there. So that's all good. And then this setup, I move my games over here, that I turn this all stuff on and it all still works and everything. And the TV actually has a built-in, um, well it has mono sound, so that's good enough for PS2 games anyway. So I have a nice little gaming station over here. And then I have, you know, the command center over here with three different sets of peripherals, which is kind of interesting, but there you are. So that that's going to be this is going to be the end of the video so i'd like to thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys later